Yeah, I had a couple of plays. Unfortunately, they already moved a couple. Have a couple of points. I took the Clippers and I took the uh, Oklahoma City Thunder. All right, I'm going to go with the Thunder team total. I'm going to go over 122 and a half. I'm also looking at Shea Gildas Alexander player points over. I think he has a massive game here. Nothing yet posted, but we'll talk about it more in this episode. All right, J Money is money. We could use this as a, a learning pod as well. Off, off, off the record, Jay Money said something very smart that a lot of people I think can learn from. He said, yeah, I took the Clippers and I took the Thunder earlier, but right now they're starting to push past, if they're not already past, my buy point. Explain mm-hmm. that to the people and, and how you feel about this, these matchups overall, maybe potentially where you got the numbers at. Yeah, so uh, I'll start with the Clippers win. Um, unfortunately, unfortunately, sometimes like you got to get on the early numbers, especially like late in the season when those lines come out the day before. You kind of got to know what spot that you like already, because uh, especially when a team goes into overtime like the, the Bulls did as well, um, or there could be an injury or anything like that. Like lines get to moving fast, man. So I always say have your sometimes. I mean, it's kind of unfair because you have to do the work early. Like you already have to know what spot that you like for the next day when those lines pump out. Like we're to that point in the season where you want to get on them early. And when you get to missing a bucket or or, or three points of value, like they could come into play there. I and mean, if you take the late line and then the, the early one cash, you're going to be pretty pissed off. So it's not that you it's unbettable, but it's one of those where you're starting to lose value. I don't use value a ton because I, don't, I think it's, uh, it's all about like what's going to win. But obviously when you're getting like literally the ass end of the line, it could really come into play, especially in the NBA with late fouls um, and things of that nature. So um, I use, usually like to have like a cap like if I take a if I take a spot and, it, and it's moved more than two points I'm likely just going to stay off of it. like that's my message to the people you don't have to bet every game and it's okay to lay off some games if you've missed the best of the number it's okay to say hey um it, it's kind of like the stock market it's, it's okay to say all right I missed that spot and let's let's go to the next day or or uh, check out a different game so um it's 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 always it's never really good to force a play if it if it doesn't feel right. I mean, if you still want to take it and you'd live with the results, that's one thing. But if you um if you feel like you've missed it, it's okay to pass on a game if the uh, if your buy point is gone. Give us a little insight on what made you look out in front for the Clippers and the Thunder, and talking about looking ahead of schedule and trying to find spots so you're ready to go and ready to fire before that number either catches steam or moves on you at all. You could be ready to fire. What made you look ahead at the Clippers and then the Thunder? Yeah, well, I always look ahead to the schedule. I'm already looking towards Friday. Like on Monday, I was looking at Wednesday's game. So I'm a spot better. So I can really look at the spots that I like and want to bet before the lines are even out. Uh, and then obviously I'll kind of gauge what the line might be when the lines come out. I know whether I like that line or not. And I know that it might go up as well. So um, unfortunately, with the Clippers game, that one ended up going into overtime. Uh, the, the the Bulls went into overtime. And now when they're in a back-to-back third game in four nights, uh, fourth game in six nights and six games game at nine nights so that was a spot that I was already looking towards it is a bounce back spot for the Clippers as well they got a couple of players on the injury report here but I do think that the Bulls will be running on running on fumes coming into the late uh coming into the fourth quarter in this game so um you do have to look into events it's not something that everybody does a lot of people just kind of look at the games like day by day they'll wake up okay what am I been today well I'm not built like that I'm looking ahead I'm already I got to stay ahead of schedule um and that's most of the time why I get some uh why I get the best of the lines no question. All right, let's talk about uh, the Thunder. And overall, I guess we could bounce off each other here since we're both looking at the game and I'm looking at the team total here. Now, this is going to be uh, third game in, what was that, four nights for the Dallas Mavericks. They're going to Oklahoma City, who's coming off a loss. Primetime game on TNT. This is just a spot. They, they're coming also, revenge, revenge J spot. They're coming off like a 30-point L last time they played these guys a few weeks back and this is a spot similar to why I agree with Jay on taking the Lakers. If Oklahoma city wants to try to keep up and keep track with Denver in that number one seed, there's very small margin for error going the rest of the way. There's no doubt about that. And if you can't come off a loss, bounce back at home versus the Dallas Mavericks, who since the all-star break have been one of the worst defensive teams in the league, 29th in defensive rating, 26th, on the glass if you can't go home versus a team that's playing three and four and on a back-to-back in your building 
then you're never going to be able to get a W. So I like the Thunder to get the dub in this spot, and I like them to, to win big. And I like them to pick up a big number. Now, as I agree with Jay that the number going from six to eight over the last day or so is a bit overinflated. I see, I've even seen somewhere, some spots on the board where the number's eight and a half. I think that's starting to get a little out of reach when we're starting talking about a top six team, in my estimation, in the Dallas Mavericks in the West. So I expect this game to be a shootout. The total has bounced around. I saw it as high as 242 and a half. It is now down to 238 and a half as we record this on Wednesday night. I think this is going to be a high scoring game. And I think Shea Goodis Alexander and the boys are going to be the ones pushing the pace and putting points up on the board on the soft Dallas Mavericks defense. Give me the team total, Oklahoma City Thunder over 122 and a half. And I haven't seen a number for Shea Goodis Alexander yet, but this is a 35 point plus night for SGA. He scored 25 points in 29 minutes in that last game. He sat because it was a blowout. This is going to be something similar, but it's going to be 36 points in 40 minutes in a game at home for the Oklahoma City Thunder. I'll take the team total over, and I'll take SGA over. Hopefully, I can get 31 and a half, something like that, 30 and a half. If I get 30 and a half, I'm 100% playing a multi-unit spot on SGA. I expect him to have a massive game against the Dallas Mavericks. J Money is money. Let's talk more about the game and that spot that you saw ahead of time. Talk about the potential, I guess, my potential play and how you feel about it. Yep, another bounce back J revenge game J spot. The last time they faced off, they lost one forty six to one eleven. Um, these were things that like you could have already looked at. You see what I'm saying? Even before the line, um, that you could have already known the spot that the Mavs ran. They're coming in off a of back to back third game in four nights, fourth game in six nights as well. Um, you got the Thunder coming off of a home loss. They obviously have the rest advantage, fourth straight home game as well. Um, it's just one of those spots. And if you're looking at the game and the way you're capping the game, you should already know that this is a Thunder spot. Now the reason why this line went up is because Luca left uh, left the game with left hamstring uh, soreness. That doesn't mean that he's out in this game, but um, you're obviously going to see I mean, we're in the injury uh, uh, driven league here, so um, like the way the market reacts. So the they, the, the market reacted, like literally the line was at minus six, like in the third quarter uh, when the Mavs are playing the Warriors. Third, fourth quarter, the line is still at minus six um, over at a few places. You see what I'm saying? So um, obviously after the game, it starts to go up to seven and a half, now eight and a half. You even see some like some offshore books at nine and a half here. It's only going to go up unless Luca does end up playing in this one. But it's just one of those things that where if you looked at this, uh, looked at the situation ahead of time, you already knew. And I, I it's crazy because I actually said this on today's show. Um, I had already knew that this was a major revenge spot for the Thunder. Like on the show, t- um, we obviously record this pod. Um, um, the night before, but I had a show, I do a show every day at 1 p.m. Eastern, and I told people then if the Mavs beat beat the Warriors today, we're taking the Thunder tomorrow on the opener. I told them straight up, whatever the opener num- number is, uh, I'm taking the Thunder. I told everybody that, so um, it's just one of those things that it just kind of comes to fruition. When looking ahead uh, for some of these spots, no matter whether there's an injury or not, I knew that I was going to be on the Thunder in this spot coming off that home loss versus the Pacers. Uh, this is a TNT game as well, uh, major your revenge spot versus the Mavs they've already beat the Mavs earlier in Dallas I believe they got two more matchups as well both games in OKC this is where the Thunder play a lot better basketball as well catching the Mavs in a uh, fatigue spot here um, this is a total Thunder spot here and I like yours look on SGA points as well yeah five and five ATS the last 10 for the Thunder they've been the the cover darlings them in the Orlando Magic and the Pelicans as well over the last couple of seasons they've quote unquote, I guess, sputtered a little bit, but I think they're still a really good basketball team when it comes down to the West. Also, another lesson that is also very important that Jay hit on yesterday, I've hit on in the past, is if you look ahead and find the spot and like the spot and do your research and it matches up and it checks out, fire and live with the results. That's just what it is. It loses you re-up and find the next spot ahead of time and do the exact same thing. And over time, you will continue to cash tickets and start stacking up weeks, months, and years in the sports betting game. So, yeah, man, I- I'm done getting cute. I tried to fade uh, Denver and those boys yesterday, or today, I should say, but on yesterday's uh, pod. And those boys are ready for the playoffs, man. They can't. They- they've they proven everything they need to to themselves, I believe, and everybody in the market. Those men are not playing any games. And Miami 
offensively seems to continue to struggle to try to find consistent offensive possessions that they can build off. And that's exactly what happened today in the first half and in the full game for the Miami Heat. All right, to recap, Jay Money is money. Likes the Clippers, got an early number, no official play there. Got out in front of the Thunder as well. He's going to back them. I'm going to play the team total on the Oklahoma City Thunder, 122.5. I would still play 123.5. Also, SGA over points. I honestly think he scores 35-plus in this matchup. Scored 25 and 29 minutes. If they hang a number at 30.5, 31.5, I'm definitely taking the over on SGA points. I think he puts up a big number. Let me ask you this, Jay. If if Luka doesn't play, does that change the dynamic on on the matchup? No, I'm on the Thunder here. Um, I mean, like I say, I'm not at this number. It's no official play for me, but um, I was taking the Thunder regard, even thinking that Luka was going to play in this game. So obviously if he's out, um, I think they're going to get smashed even more. I don't think the Thunder are the type of team that they're going to overlook a team with their best player out. This is a TNT game. This is a SGA MVP case building type of game. Um, I think they go balls to the wall and try to smack these guys up here. Yeah, that's exactly what I was asking. I And I agree. The Thunder are the type of team that play down to comp. They're just going to show up and play their game, whoever's out there, Luca or not. And that's who I expect to come out for the Oklahoma City Thunder. I expect them to come out in a big way. Big team total number, big SGA number, who is obviously the head of the snake and the trigger man over there. 4J Money is money. I'm your host, Sean Little. Make sure you subscribe to the pod. Tell a homie to tell a friend to subscribe to the pod. Go check out NBA Talk with Jay, 1 p.m. Eastern Daily on that YouTube channel. Go subscribe there. Until next time, tomorrow, I'll be back with Matt Moore. Don't forget it. We are presented by BetMGM, the king of sportsbooks. And get buckets, baby. We'll see you all tomorrow.